here and those will pop up and you'll be able to um, get directions on how to do that as we go. Um, and I guess without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Walter. Have at it. All right. Welcome. Let me share my screen and let's get started. Whoops. Here we go. Hang on a second. Okay. Can everybody see this? Yes. All right. Yes. Welcome to Riding the Wave of Disru Disruption, Networking and Closing Deals in a Virtual World. So I wanted to um, start with, I'll uh, introduce myself, Walter Jankowski, a reinvention consultant with Better Dash Faster. Uh, I'm a, a consulting company that helps organizations do things better and faster. So I do a lot of process improvement and metrics. And um, I am going to say I am not an artist. Um, I maybe play one on TV. I always tell people that um, back when I was in uh, deciding to go to college or not, I was deciding whether to go to mime school or engineering school. And I picked engineering school. So um, I work with all different types of organizations. Um, uh, I'm, most of my clients are within 15 minutes of my house. I'm in Madison here. And uh, so I I love connecting up people with um, businesses in the in, in the uh, Madison area. All right. So here's what uh, I thought we'd have on tap. I'm going to talk. Let's start with a little bit. Uh, raise your hand if you've been disrupted in the last uh, three months, four months, five months. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, disruptive innovation and then uh, riding the wave of dis disruption. Then I'm going to turn it over to um, uh, Jenny Gao, who is actually living. Uh, she pivoted uh, in her organization uh, as an artist, and I want her to uh, tell her story. Then I'm going to kind of switch over to uh, networking uh, and how do you build your network and sales virtually. And so we'll talk about um, how would you how would you actually uh, uh, network in the uh, COVID era and then we'll wrap up and do next steps. All right, here we go. Um, I'm gonna do the first poll. I'm gonna, uh, what I'd like to do is see where you guys are at. I'm gonna uh, put a poll up. And the first two questions are, uh, where's everyone as an entrepreneur? And uh, so I have, a, a, art is currently a hobby, but I'd like to start my own business someday, or I have started my business and I have, a, a, or I have had a strong business going, or how many last saw my presentation, entrepreneurs selling B2B? So if you would, three out of, all right, 60, 83% voted. Anybody else? Okay, seeing none, I am going to, all right. So we have art is currently a hobby. You've, we've got uh, uh, one. And so close to two thirds are uh, you either have a business or you have a strong business going. That's fantastic. And then um, looks like two thirds haven't seen it. So, whoops, let me share the results. Sorry about that. Okay, that gives me a little context of, of who's on the line. And so, I am going to, uh, with that, if you didn't see my last presentation, it was uh, uh, about a year ago, and um, it was about a year ago, and we basically were, were talking about being an entrepreneur. And I'm gonna go through the Walter Jankowski, uh, I have owned my business now for the last 14 years, and I'm gonna go through kind of the eight things that you need to have as being an art entrepreneur. I'm gonna go th through these fairly quickly. You can got, do kind of a self-assessment, but um, the first thing is you gotta have passion, mission, and personal leadership. In other words, you, you truly have a passion, mission, and gift to work in your business. You wake up every day motivated uh, uh, to your craft. You have the personal leadership and motivation to work on your own. 
you help able to facilitate and take charge of conversations and you uh, you do what you say you're going to do when you said you were going to do it so you can score yourself zero to five how well are you doing all right next one is are you able to sell your services your work and yourself able uh, able to concisely describe and sell what you do and the value of your services you have appropriate technology and channels to generate awareness buzz and sales and you're willing to effectively network and meet people all right next one is client and or customer focus you're able to identify current and a, a lead which are current customers and, and target customers and you understand their needs and preferences and able to focus efforts to get and keep them so basically how do you go after people that really want your work next is you produce high quality work that people want uh, you're able to produce high quality uh, work that uh, people respond to and show a willingness to buy or want to help you get more work all right next one is um, being the go-to for something uh, for something able to uh, develop skills that allow you to differentiate yourself from your peers people come to you for a particular expertise or a type of work that you do next one is able to use uh, effectively use technology able to effectively use uh, to uh, technology to build awareness make sales run your business and connect with people how are you doing there and then um, next one is able to manage the financial side of your business you have an understanding of the cost to create your work and know the value and going rate you are able to manage your cash flow your time your resources to produce revenue profit and pay your bills and then the last one is do you, how's your business set up uh, uh, do you have all of the things that you need to set your business up do you have the appropriate business infrastructure set up legal entity legal protections trademarks copyrights insurance bank accounts uh, etc so here's the reason i wanted to go through this is this was uh, the center of my talk last time of doing this high level assessment today we're going to focus on these two able to sell your services and your work and then able to effectively use technology especially around networking etc all right so let's if you would put in the chat um which one of these areas do you need to work on the most do you think all right i'll just give you a, a 30 seconds go ahead and type in one or two things that you think i got to i got to work on this see where people are and as a reminder um, you can click on the bottom on the chat box and pop that information in there um, if you're not comfortable sharing with the group you're welcome to share it to me directly and I'll help um, share that with Walter you can see a technology nice develop a website move forward in this area better use of technology good best use good All right, that gives me a, a sense of where people are at. I'm, I'm uh, glad. Uh, so, as I said, we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, B and um, F today. But um, hopefully, you'll get some ideas. Uh, you are. This will be participatory. I'm gonna. I have uh, several polls, and then uh, I also have a breakout room. We're uh, uh, about three quarters of the way through. All right, let's get started. And I wanna, um, we are currently living in a world of the disruption. Would you agree? We have, you know, COVID-19, social unrest. There's lots of stuff going on that is impacting people's business and how they do business. And the key is, 
this disruption is not going to go away. And um, just understanding what the disruptions are and then how you can ride the wave of disruption. I love this quote. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Uh, Mike Tyson said that. And uh, most of us got punched in the mouth probably in February or March of this year and are still trying to recover from it. And so I am going to say that and point out that, yes, there, there were lots of people that lost uh, and people that lost jobs. You can see here uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, industries were hit uh, very hard, uh, art being one of them, because uh, especially performance art and uh, when there are no spaces to, for people to gather, then uh, it's very difficult to um, to have that. But I am going to say there were people that were lo that that lost, and you could see uh, travel industry, uh, the restaurant industry, you know, Vegas conferences, sports. All of those have, have lost. However, for everyone that have lost, there's been several winners like online shopping and uh, PPE and pharmaceuticals and Zoom and Netflix and anything that is virtual and online has actually had, had a boom. And so now, how do you take that disruption and actually ride the wave? And so let's uh, do another poll here. I just, uh, what was the impact of COVID-19 on your business? And uh, if you would, let's uh, do the next one. And so the poll, uh, not, um, not much impact at all, somewhat of an impact or a significant imp impact. Where would you say you landed? All right. Oh, man. 100% were uh, had a significant impact on uh, uh, with the COVID-19. And I would expect that from this group. Uh, uh, most, uh, if you're running a business, you couldn't meet with customers, you couldn't uh, meet face-to-face. -face. It made it a lot more difficult. So, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't show that. Look at the, so it looks like everyone was uh, significantly impacted. And uh, the, so let's look at how people might have been dis, uh, impacted. So sudden loss of events and projects, uh, uh, several have lost jobs, uh, people needing financial, uh, uh, financial help. And oops, and uh, I gotta move this, hang on a second. And then uh, just, as I said, most uh, organizations have gone virtual or online. So the, uh, lots of organizations are seeing a lot more traffic uh, in online transactions and online uh, selling, and then uh, just meeting people uh, virtually. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, last, about two weeks ago, I was at a meeting with, uh, uh, Jenny Gao, and she uh, described how she handled the the COVID crisis and the COVID quarantine and what she did. So, uh, Jenny, would you like to describe your what you did? Sure. Yeah. Hey there. Um, yeah. So I can I can tell everyone here a little bit about what I shared with you um, as far as. The steps that I've taken with COVID-19, uh, like everybody else here, I was significantly impacted by the pandemic pretty much overnight. I uh, went from having a lot of work lined up in the upcoming months and uh, shows that were about to open to all the shows being canceled, um, other events and workshops that I was teaching being being canceled, um, and, and about 70% of my projects overnight canceled or delayed. Um, and so, it's uh, it's a pretty radical shift, and I think especially you know with the year being 2020, uh, there's almost uh, there was almost an excitement around the new year that this was supposed to be uh, a year of vision, um, and um, and so the first thing that I did when 
when the pandemic hit and, and the Safer at Home issue, Safer at Home order was issued, uh, was to just take some time to write about the core of what I deliver as an artist and as a business owner. Um, and I've tried to keep centered this, uh, this understanding that while a crisis is scary, a crisis is, an is also an opportunity for a correction. And a lot of what's going wrong right now was already going wrong before the pandemic. Um, and so I took some time to write about this and to make sure that anything I put my energy towards during this time was something that would still be aligned with my values and goals as a creator. And so um, the next action that I took was to launch my new e-commerce store. Uh, and now I was lucky in that I'd already been the process of building the store prior to the pandemic. Uh, so a lot of the groundwork was already done. Um, and uh, really the pandemic forced me to just finish and launch the store faster than I otherwise would have if I were still um, juggling my usual load of shows and, um, and client work. Um, but so I pivoted a lot of my time uh, to, uh, to setting up and running and generating sales through the e-commerce store. Um, and also setting up a part of my studio to be able to handle and fulfill shipments. And so that's one thing where like if you are going to be selling work online, um, if you don't have systems in place for how you're going to pack and ship, it can get stressful really quickly. Um, so just making sure that, that I had that set up and if I couldn't have open studios and have guests um, in my space, then I could still, um, then I could rededicate that space and, um, and interact with people by the orders that, that were placed online and shipping them out. Um, and so um, one thing that I'll say has been important with the setup of the e-commerce stores that um, I've been mindful of what I am and am not interested in selling. Uh, the reason that I'm an artist is because I believe that creativity is important and that we should foster meaningful connections. Um, and that's harder when you can't have in-person events. Um, and so I, so I asked myself like, well, in what ways does selling online still fulfill that? Because if all I become during this time is a widget maker, uh, then that's no different than having a, a corporate day job um, and there's really no point to, to choosing this path as, as an independent artist. Um, and so, uh, so then what does motivate me to continue to sell online and to be inspired by doing this work is that I do believe in providing artwork for people's homes. Um, I do uh, believe in transforming the physical environments that, that people share with one another, and especially during a pandemic when people are spending a lot of time at home. Um, I also believe in providing artwork at a more accessible price point than the original artworks that I create that, that sell for much more. And I can do that still at a high level of quality through things like limited edition prints um, that are archival. And, um, and you know, with this, uh, with the promotion of the e-commerce store, I've also been able to continue promoting the client services, services that I can offer virtually. Um, and so the third, um, ongoing action then has been to just continue finding ways to engage with people online. The hardest hurdle for me to cross was how to replace all the networking that, do, that I do. Um, I'm highly extroverted and I'm a strong networker and I get a lot of my work via in-person networking, which obviously can't happen right now. Um, and not seeing people in person, uh, meant that I had to rethink what does it mean to still stay visible um, and contributing to this community. And, uh, and so this is the part where it's going to look different for each person what that type of engagement is. For myself, uh, my strength is storytelling. I'm, uh, I think, an effective communicator and a storyteller. And the artworks that I create are also very story driven. Um, and so, with these stories, uh, these are also things that typically take a lot of time, labor, emotion, and, and just personal investment. Um, and so it's this type of stuff that I might not have had as much time to do prior to the pandemic. And so that's another question for each of you is, what are some of the things that you would have liked to have done before the pandemic that you now have the time and space to do? Um, and so that time is, that time is here and now. Um, the fourth thing that 
I've been staying on top of during this pandemic is that uh, there are sources of funding available to businesses and not just art grants. Um, I don't think I'm uh, saying anything that other people don't know when I say like, there was already not a lot of funding for the arts and therefore not a lot of grant opportunities during the pandemic for the arts. Um, there have been some funds like the Artist Relief uh, Fund that did provide $5,000 grants. That's the biggest one that I've seen for the arts, but that was so competitive that only 1% of people who applied even got it, uh, which is obviously not something that um, that anyone can rely on. Um, and so in terms of funding then, uh, you know, we, we as artists are business people. And, and I think that's something that frequently gets overlooked in our industry. And so we can apply for things like the SBA and the PPP and um, the WEDC grants that are available here in Wisconsin, the Dane by Local grants. And so these were other funds that we could have access to as long as we're not just uh, specifically looking for aid that is for our industry. Um, and as a final note, I, I kind of want to come back to my opening comment that a crisis is an opportunity for a correction. Uh, I want to emphasize the importance of that. Uh, Again, a lot of what we're learning right now isn't new. We knew before the pandemic that there was a problem of the role of privilege in the arts and who gets to be in the space and who doesn't. We knew already about the racial injustices and the inequities. Uh, we knew about economic inequality. We knew about the problems of the gig economy and wage stagnation and labor exploitation. All of this was true before the pandemic and it's just getting exacerbated by the fact that there's a crisis now. And so what that means is that what work we're doing right now needs to center these issues and how we resolve those issues. Because otherwise the types of businesses that we're building or rebuilding during this time aren't going to create an economy on the other side of this that's going to produce different or better results. Uh, and and I think what's especially powerful for any of us who um, work, say, as independent artists, is that while we may not have uh, the economic power of large corporations, what we do typically have are really strong grassroots communities. We have uh, a strong local presence, um, and and we're just much closer to the source of what's happening within our communities. And 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 there's power and the people that comes from that. And so for us to model then in our own practices, uh, the justices that we want, the equity that we want, um, to model that in our work and how we price our work and the type of work that we choose to take on during this time and the messages that we help to spread and advocate for, um, that I think is what sets us up for a better economy on the other side of this. And yeah, so that's, uh, those, are, those are the things that have uh, been the driving forces of my work during this time. And I, and I, hope, that, uh, I hope that my sharing is helpful to all of you. Awesome. Hey, uh, Jenny, mm -hmm. uh, uh, can you describe, uh, so yeah. you went online and what was the overall results of that and impact? The overall results of that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, so right away, I, I was able to generate pretty good online sales. And that was something that I couldn't necessarily have predicted before. I didn't know what demand for my work would be online. And, and especially since, you know, certainly we're not the only ones in an economic crisis. So a lot of people are unemployed right now. And there's just a lot of uncertainty. And I just didn't know what would the demand be for, uh, for, art um, and uh, and it's actually been pretty good um, and so people continued to buy artwork for um, uh, for themselves for, for their homes for their friends during this time and um, and particular to my work I found that people really resonate with the stories behind it and um, and so I think like that's that's been um, that's been really impactful to see yeah um i will say that like i mean like things like e-commerce like it, it takes time to build it certainly helped that um 
but I already had a presence before that. So I'm benefiting from the labor of past Jenny <laughs> um, to be able to sell my work online. Um, and I also would say that, you know, like it, it didn't replace some of the client work that I lost. Um, what, what I make via e-commerce sales doesn't equate what I would get through uh, custom client projects, um, but it has helped to bridge the gap. Good. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, if you have specific questions for um, Jenny, we can uh, uh, just put them in the chat, and then if if we have time at the end, uh, we will uh, come back to her. All right. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. You did course. awesome. She told me that story uh, with the group of people, and I thought. Um, a lot of people are going through that um, self-reflection and looking through, you know, uh, I call it the uh, looking in, inside their hamburger. And so I'm going to show you today and we're going to talk a little bit about how do you do that? So disruption has not, is not a new thing. And I'm going to, let's talk a little bit about disruptive innovation. and. Um, Clinton Christensen, back in 1997, he uh, came up with the concept of uh, disruptive innovation. And basically, uh, he describes it as an innovation that is, dis uh, that is dis disruptive, allows a whole new population of consumer market access to your products and services that was historically only accessible to a smaller group of, co of consumers. And so if you think about success, successful disruptions out there. If you, you know, you think about the iPhone, it basically disrupted all of these other items, uh, you know, calculators and, and um, uh, GPS and uh, uh, cameras, etc. All of these things were disrupted by this one device. Uh, a couple of other uh, you, uh, major disruptors, Uber, you know, uh, uh, disrupting the whole transportation industry when that came out. Uh, they figured out that uh, or, or, um, cab rides were significantly uh, decreased uh, because of Uber. And same with uh, I, what I have done in the uh, time in the COVID uh, quarantine, I basically stepped back. I had very similar uh, issues with uh, uh, Jenny. I basically run a consulting company and most of my clients, they said, you know what, uh, don't talk to us until at least July. Well, it's July now, and now a lot of them are coming back and I'm, I was able to kind of say, here's what I am gonna do. I'm gonna better myself. And one of the things that I did was every day, every day I took some seminar. I, I watched some webinar online, just like you guys are doing right now. And one of the ones that I saw was uh, Simon Sinek. And uh, if you're not familiar with him, he's a, a fantastic speaker. And he, he talked about uh, building resilience. And he has the five principles of resilient organizations. One is advanced a just cause. Just like Jenny uh, had talked about, she looked inside and said, what are the things that I care about and aligned it to those things that I, I wanna make the world a better place. And so she aligned all of her stuff around that. Having a, a trusting team and building a team of people around you that uh, they all trust each other, have a study or, or study a worthy rival. So look at somebody that, you think, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the exact um, field you are in, but somebody you have a lot of respect for, either uh, an organization or a company, and go and study them. Go find out what are they doing that I want to do more of that. He also talked about prepare for existential flexibility and you know, prepare for new technologies and ability to pivot and change. That is in 21st century organizations and in businesses like yourselves, that is where those that can pivot quickly and, and adapt are gonna be a, a, a around more than others. And then the last is just have the courage to, to lead and take, it, uh, and take a stance. And when, uh, as I said, when I, Jenny and I had talked about this, I. I remembered this talk and I was saying, 
wow, she represented all five of those things uh, in terms of a resilient organization. So uh, kudos to you, Jenny, and you're going to be around for a while. Right. Um, and like Jenny had said, uh, it's an opportunity. Disruption is an opportunity. Never. I love this quote. Um, one of the seminars that I took, if you haven't ever heard of him, um, Daniel Burris, he used to be a, a university professor and he is now a futurist and he talks all over the world about, um, you know, uh, his, his whole concept is having hard trends. Look at where society is going and he speaks of go to where the puck is going to be and then you will be successful no matter what you do and no matter what your organization does just go to where society is going and then that those are hard trends that hard trends are those things that are factually going to uh, uh, going to happen and he he came up with the code of never waste a good crisis because in that there are many hard trends that that's where society is going all right, so if that's the case, now I want to pivot and go to well, how do you do this virtually? How do you how do you actually network in a virtual world? So we'll talk about three things: effectively finding, building, and maintaining a network, and then uh, best practices of making sales, and then some of the do's and don'ts in networking. Now I know I like Jenny. Uh, I am an extreme extrovert. I, I This has hit me very hard, uh, uh, staying at home. And I actually have only been out, I think, three times since March 10th, 10th which was my birthday. And it's killing me. <laughs> but I am I am doing things like this. And I'm, I'm finding ways to uh, uh, express my energy. So let's do another poll. How are you at networking? And uh, so, uh, one is I need significant work in the area. Two is, hang on a second, let me get, oops. Uh, hang on, sorry, sorry. Here we go, four. And uh, so how are you doing, uh, how are you at networking? Uh, you need significant work in the area, a little better, but could be a lot better. Doing okay or pretty average, need some work. I'm almost there, have a little bit to do, or I'm very strong in networking. Where are you at? <laughs> we got five out of eight. All right. One. Anybody else? Here we go. Let's share the results. It's all over the map. So we have about uh, 40 or 50, about half of you need a little bit of work. The other half, um, and actually I wish I knew who was who because you are gonna do a little networking. Um, I am, I love networking and I am going to show you some techniques of things that I do uh, in networking. And I want you to think about um, if you want to get connect or if you want to make sales or uh, 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 grow your network, your next business to business gig or sale will likely be because of a connection. And Mark, you are uh, very aware of that, I am sure. And um, so let me let me kind of go through some of the basics of of making connections. So the first thing that uh, one of the um, in the assessment right up front, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to be own your own business, is having client or customer focus. And what that means is, yes, you uh, try to meet their needs and, and, and do the like. But what it also means is I want you to think about your lead and target customers. 
So a lead customer is an existing customer or that already buys your stuff. They're interested and they support your work. Okay. That, that, that's a lead customer. There are existing customers that are most, but also think of as a lead customer as those that are most demanding. If you satisfy their needs, you'll satisfy a whole bunch of other people. So people that are, that are very particular or that want a, a very specific things. If you could design your, your products and services to meet their needs, then you're going to satisfy a whole bunch of other people that are there. And I want you to think of not just a group, I want you to think of like a name or a role of these are the people that I want to go after, or these are my lead customers. The second are your target customers. These are customers that you want to go after or get more of. These are customers and target customers also customers that will sell your work for you. That is one of the things that you really want to do when you do, when you think about who are my customers is you want to figure out who are those people that I don't have to go sell B to C or business to customer uh, to individual customers. I don't have to sit in a booth. If I can connect up with those that are B to B business to business, if I meet uh, somebody who can buy 10 of my pieces and uh, fill a hospital or a clinic or a new, uh, uh, business, you know, CUNA mutual building, then I, it's much easier to find that one person than finding it B2C. And so I want you to think about who are your target customers. And so it might be, and I, I know Mark and I have had conversations uh, about this and he has done a lots of work in, in this field, in this area of, uh, identifying key architects and uh, developers and facility managers and anybody who is a decision maker that if you if you sell them and get to know them and network with them and and not sell at them but actually become friends with them then they will call you and say hey I've got another building going up or I'd love to see your uh, pieces in this space or whatever okay see the difference you have customers that are lead and then you have customers that are a target now i'm going to be asking you in just a bit i'm going to break you into groups and i'm going to ask you who and who specifically even a, or even a name of a person or a role might be your lead or target customers right so once you identify that group of people those those names or roles then you go and meet your lead or target customers and whether you know it or not they all tribe up uh, everyone connects up and right now it's not necessarily face to face but they still have meetings and they still are, are uh, connecting up with people and um, and I'll show you how to do that and dabble art party and downtowners and meetups and uh, what you want to do is try to meet those people that are connectors that will connect other people. And so the key is, is instead of just going out and trying to network with everybody, you target and you get it down to a very specific group or group of people that you, that you want to connect up with. And once you find them, then they have a tribe and they all meet up. Okay. So here's, I'm going to put you in a breakout. And I'm going to give you about five minutes, and this is going to be a, kind of a hot seat introductions. And I want you to uh, have your name and give your elevator pitch. Um, if you're not familiar with an elevator pitch, it's basically uh, if you were taking an elevator uh, in a five-story building and uh, one of your target customers or came in and, you know, some architect or engineer or uh, somebody that would, that would sell your work, what and they say, oh, well, well, what do you do? I haven't seen you around here. You give them your elevator pitch. And it should be from the fifth floor down to the uh, down to the first floor. So you got about 30 seconds. What's your elevator pitch? And then I want you in your groups is I'm looking for who is your ideal target customer or and, and who would you want to meet? Holy cow, I would love to meet X or Y. All right. So I am going to put you into, um, I'm going to put you into a breakout group and you're going to, so remember these, 
elevator, your name, elevator pitch, and then uh, who would be your ideal customers. And so right now I'm going to have eight people and I want everybody into this. I'm just going to randomly assign it to three different, uh, actually I'll do two different rooms and I'm going to give you about four minutes. Ready? And there you go. All you have to do is say join. Hey, Julie. Hey, Mark. Hey, Sarah. Hey. Just the three of us? I think so. I don't know. Looks like that, but there's 10 people there, so I think we're missing two. Uh, the other two might be Megan and uh, Boulder. But. Uh, Angelica, you're muted. Okay. Uh, just so you know, I have a very barky dog, so if you hear that, that's my dog. Well, my name is Mark Weller, and um, I'm a time stacking photographer. I do this full time. What is time stacking? I take 100, 100 um, photographs of a, of a single topic, uh, a subject, and I can um, transform that into a painter like uh, two dimensional art that you'll hang on, uh, on your wall. Um, I've got art in 16 states and uh, mostly corporate customers. Uh, and I do very big, 60 inches by 38 inches, ideal for when you walk in uh, your corporate um, lobby or in your boardroom, uh, that, kind of, uh, that kind of activity. That's my elevator speech. Who's up next? Uh, how about Julie? Oh, thanks for volunteering me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here as a facilitator, so. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Julie Rush, and um, I make jewelry, and I'm a photographer. And started doing this about two years ago, full time. Before that, I was doing part time, and the majority of my work is sold at um, art fairs. So that makes this kind of a challenging time right now. Um, as far as my jewelry goes, it's nature inspired. I work in a lot of copper, um, sometimes with stones, sometimes without. I do beaded chains. I also do a technique known as fold forming where the metal is heated and hammered and then heated again um, repeatedly to fold and unbend it. Um, my photography is um, a majority nature-based and nature-inspired. So sometimes I think my, my, my love of nature that I do all my photography also inspires my jewelry as well. Thanks, uh, how about Angelica next? Okay, uh, my name is Angelica Contreras. I'm originally from Guadalajara, Mexico. I'm a mixed media artist and uh, my work focuses uh, mostly on identity and is directed uh, mostly to the Latinx communities and talks about, about the, um, uh, a lot about those communities in specific. Um, in my work, I use a lot of um, collage. So I collage different kinds of papers to my pieces. And um, what else about it? Um, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and share it anyway. Uh, I wear a few different hats. You all probably know me mostly as an event producer for Dane Arts, but I am also a graphic designer and a DJ. Um, so in short, I do a lot of things all kind of related to events in person. Uh, so it's not really my, uh, greatest time right now. Uh, an ideal customer for me is usually a small business or something hyper local. Um, I do all sorts of events, but I tend to kind of keep it pretty close. I think that is all we're supposed to, don't mind my dog, I think that's all we're supposed to talk about. Uh, Walter, should we rejoin the group? We, yeah. didn't, we didn't talk about the ideal customers yet. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, why don't you go through your ideal customers? I'll get you back in two minutes or in one minute. Good. Um, Mark, why don't you go ahead first? You know, uh, in building projects, you've got engineers, you've got project managers, you've got designers, somebody in that chain of command. And man, I'm learning that almost every one of these is different. Um, somebody uh, is responsible for figuring out the art. And usually it's not the first thing they 
they want to talk about. They, they got to figure out how many floors they're going to put in the building. They're going to figure out how many bathrooms are going to be in the in the building. And it's somebody along the line says, "Oh, what what color are we going to make this uh, this hallway? What 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 what's the paint scheme? What's the carpet? What are we going to put on the walls?" That's the person I want to get to, the decision maker or the influencer who's going to say, this is going to be you know, a farm scene or this is going to be some abstract, you know, whatever their sense that they're trying to communicate through their art as to who they are and what their business is. That's the person I want to meet. That's the person I want to, uh, to get to know. And that's the person I want to uh, sell my, my wares to. Okay. I would say that my ideal customer right now, um, you know, women, basically 20 to 75 for the jewelry. Um, that's who I normally show to sell to at a show. Uh, what I'd like to do is start targeting stores and I'm kind of working on that, working up a line sheet and getting it out to boutique stores in the area. I know it's not the best venue right now, but I have the time to do it. And it's something that I had wanted to do anyway. As far as the photography, um, you know, I'm going uh, right now for less shows with the photography, in-person shows, and I was aiming, this is before COVID hit, aiming more towards galleries and that kind of thing with the photography. Um, so. Awesome. Angelica. And our last uh, seven seconds, Angelica. Seven sections? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I've noticed is most of my customers tend to have further. Uh, Sarah, are you back in the room? Yes, um, there we go. I just wanted to make sure we were recording again. All right, carry on. Thank you, Walter. All right. Okay. So that was a little practice of uh, doing your elevator. How did everybody do? Okay. All right. Let's go to um, making connections. Um, what I would recommend, and this is kind of a long-term strategy. This is not going to happen overnight, but you should be doing this all throughout is start building your network now and here's how you do it. So you determine who are your lead and target customers, then you go to where they, and, and you think about, um, you think about where do they tribe up? And uh, so it could be virtually or face-to-face, uh, -face. eventually it will be face-to-face, uh, -face. and then try to make a connection or two in that space. and. Um, whether you know it or not, everybody in Madison, pretty much in Madison, is about uh, two degrees, maybe three degrees of separation. So if you don't know it, some one of your friends knows somebody who is one of your target customers. And then you ask for a connection. You ask for 15 minutes, a phone call, or or a, uh, online Zoom call, or, uh, or, or uh, through email. And what you do is you have a discussion you set up an interview an uh, informational interview you phone email face to face uh, whatever it looks like but you don't ever ask for work or a gig or a job and it's a discussion what you do is you ask four questions so tell me about what you do what do you do all day every day uh, how, what's your background how did you get you to how did you get to where you are a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to meet with them and then you el you ask who else can i speak with uh, and what in this informational interview, whether it be 15 minutes, um, um, normally when people, you ask for 15 minutes, you're going to get an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And it should be 90% of them talking, 10% of you talking. So I'm going to go through some of the do's and don'ts of networking. And I love this quote of the, you know, the richest people in the world for building a, a or look for and build uh, networks, everyone else looks for work. And so here's don't number one. It's about them, not about you. So please do not try to, to uh, I'll, I call it vomit onto them. I, I subscribe to person and uh, you ask them uh, and you ask them about yourself and uh, lo and behold if most of the conversation is about them they're going to leave you and go wow that, that person was very interesting and you're trying to help others all right 
Number two, please do not sell or brag. Scene number one, uh, anytime I meet, you, and you, you've all been to a networking event where somebody comes in and starts handing out their business card and, and, um, and talking about themselves and what, what you know, products and services they have, don't do that. It's much better. Nobody likes to be sold to. Number three is uh, seek to help others. Uh, give before you receive. So uh, provide an introduction to someone who uh, can further the person's own interest, forward a rel relevant article, or uh, make a LinkedIn recommendation, et cetera. Do number four is connect with connectors. All of these people, and there's many in Madison that, that they love connecting people with other people. Jenny being one and same with uh, uh, Mark Weller and Mark Frere and all, all of these people, they love connecting. That's part of their job and they love connecting. So definitely be meeting with them. And that also goes for organizations, whether it be, um, and I get emails, I get emails probably 50, uh, 10, time, uh, 10 times a week of various organizations that are telling me, uh, here's some things that are, that might be, uh, you, you might want to know in this area. Number five, meet people you don't know. So especially in the virtual world, that it, it's a little bit harder, but get out of your comfort zone and, and know that everyone has a story. So if you uh, ask for advice, you uh, I had had no one say, no, I don't want to meet with you, Walter. All right. So uh, be bold, ask for a, a strategic introduction. So uh, as I said, we're, we are two or th uh, no more than three degrees of separation in Madison. If you have a particular person that you want to meet, whether it be an architect or an interior designer or something, I'd really love to meet that person. Ask for that. Okay. Number seven, do follow up. Once you do, uh, if somebody makes a connection, follow up and then follow up again. Uh, I always uh, determine who needs to take the lead. And so when I'm having a conversation with somebody, I always think, do they need me or do I need them? And if they need me, I'll give them my contact information. I'll put it back to them saying, you contact me and then I'll, I'll, make, I'll, I'll connect you up with. Um, but then I'll, I'll always try to get a follow-up meeting. All right. Um, networking online. How, uh, how are you guys doing? Let's do a quick um, social network poll. Um, how are you doing in um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest? Let me pull this poll up. Five. How, uh, and select the, uh, this is multiple, which uh, uh, social networking technologies do you use the most? Do you use the most? Oops. There we go. Okay, Facebook and here I'll end polling and share the results. Looks like Facebook and Instagram. We have a few Twitters, uh, I, Pinterest, no one. So. Um, the key here is, especially if you are um, trying to connect up with people, using the technology that you have is, or, or uh, that is available to you is kind of key. So let me share some, um, how many of you are on LinkedIn? Raise your hand if you're on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, I would highly recommend it. Um, and I apologize, I'm gonna be going over just a few minutes here, it's 8.02, but um, my, I'll tell you a quick story. My son is in advertising and he is uh, runs social media campaigns. Uh, he works for um, uh, lots of different large organizations and he, I typed up my LinkedIn page or I, I uh, updated my LinkedIn page and I sent it to him and he, and he read it over called me back in an hour and he said, dad, uh, I want you to go down to, at that time it was go down to Cooper's Tavern and I want you to read it out loud to somebody. And he said, if you are saying things 
that you would never say in a conversation, get it out of your LinkedIn. It's social media. So make it snappy, appropriate to your profession, make it sixth grade simple and, uh, and uh, also show kind of results and have things of what you have accomplished and or things that you have created. Then uh, take out any buzzwords, in, in, especially in your field. And then what, uh, the other recommendation that I have, and this has worked famously, is don't ever ask for recommendations. I want you to you know, get your LinkedIn page all set up and then give recommendations. And I want you to think about um, people that have made an impact in your life that have, you know, you have a lot of respect for that, you know, uh, an old boss or uh, somebody that has made an impact and then just randomly give them an, a, a recommendation. And what that's going to do, and I would do that on a Monday and a Wednesday and a Friday, and then I'd do it the following week, Monday, Wednesday, and a Friday. And what that's going to do is you, by making recommendations, if anybody is looking for your services, you will show up towards the top. And, and then people go, oh, um, so-and-so made a recommendation. So highly recommend, make recommendations, don't give them. And then also join groups. That is where you are going to meet your target customers if you join groups. And you can join the architects group and uh, uh, whatever, all right? There's lots of other professional networking uh, groups out there, Meetup and, and Zing and uh, um, Google uh, has lots of different networking uh, opportunities out there that you can do virtually. Many of these are, are, are now virtual. And I'll tell you, uh, both of my kids, uh, they're 31 and 29, and they have mastered the networking. And now every time that they um, uh, want to make a, a job change or looking for advice, they go to their network. So riding the wave of disruption, get online. I'd recommend, you know, uh, your website and Pinterest. Get and uh, um, I, I am going to say, actually, uh, if you aren't online and you can't sell your products online, I'd highly recommend it. It's it's relatively, there's lots of services that are out there. Um, here is a good friend of mine, Claudia. She coaches people on how to set up a Pinterest account and, 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 and drive sales, has tremendous results. But, you know, there are people out there like that that can just, help you do it. You don't have to figure it all out yourself. You can just hire somebody to help you get it set up. Um, so get online, get good at virtual meetings and, and uh, running and setting up virtual meetings, and then go connect with connectors. Okay. Um, I'm going to, here's your, here's my challenge. Identify two leader target customers. Think of uh, specifically who they might be. And go out and look up and look for them and do searches on LinkedIn or, as I said, uh, uh, you you have a friend or a friend of a friend that is uh, knows these people and go meet with two of them by the end of August. Okay, so uh, we are over time. I can't take questions. However, um, I hope you liked. Uh, it. I hope you got a few different tips. Uh, are there any? Questions that anybody wants to end with, you can open it up. Question on there, on the chat, um, a little bit about, you know, people have the personal side of themselves and their business side or sometimes two separate businesses. When it comes to LinkedIn, would you recommend that they have a business profile and a personal profile or adding those together? And how do you sort of, what are some recommendations to make that distinction? Actually, uh, that is an excellent question. I have, a, a matter of fact, that is one of my projects that I'm doing right now. I just redid my website, and now I have uh, three interns that are helping me this summer aligning my website with my, I've, I'm opening up a Facebook uh, business pay uh, account, and then I have a, a LinkedIn um, a LinkedIn account, and I'm gonna align all of that and then any posts, you can set it up where any posts that go into Twitter goes into your Facebook post, et cetera. But it allows you to be more social. 
you, these are things that you wouldn't necessarily put you know, on your website, but you uh, like Facebook is a, a definitely a lot more personal where LinkedIn is a lot is more professional. So you can open ac accounts in both of them. What else? Uh, but, Any but other? Would you recommend, would you recommend um, a, my business LinkedIn page and my personal LinkedIn page or combining them into one because it's part of your repertoire of an experience? Uh, if you're an artist, I would have two separate ones and have me as an artist that is, uh, I will do work for you, but then have your business and that would be more, here is all of my business. Um, here's my whole portfolio. And then make it you being, uh, I'm available for, you know, I'm, it, it would be like you having a personal account that is, uh, I'm selling myself to help you in your business, you know, uh, decorate your clinics, or, or et cetera. I, 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 there's, there'll be some overlap, but I have, I, I'm going to have two accounts and I have my personal, which is just me. And then I'm going to have my business account, which is what my business does. Walter. Yeah. Um, one of the issues that I'm kind of running into uh, is businesses, many businesses are not on the ropes, but they're certainly, these are not great times for them either. Right. And uh, in the priorities that they have, you know, art is also hard sell to begin with. Well, it's, it's dropped down another 10 slots. Um, and I hear people just tell me point blank, man, this is the last thing I'm thinking about. We got real problems here. I'm laying people off. I'm, you know, 40% less revenue this year than last year. This is a train wreck go away. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I get that. I mean, that's, that's a real problem for them. How do I deal with it though? How do I keep my business intact when yeah. my revenues, my customers, my clients are in a world of hurt? Yeah. I am actually, Mark, I thought of you in putting this together. I would be looking at very specific people, those organizations, remember when those that were on the winning side, people are still mm -hmm. building buildings. Uh, for instance, CUNA Mutual is building, they're designing, redesigning their entire campus. And they are going to, um, they're uh, designing it for millennials. And uh, they have three buildings that are going up over the course of the next uh, two years. If you don't know the guy who's uh, the facilities manager there, you should. And and the architects that got it, the, I can't remember the name, but they're the ones right downtown in the Ovation Center. Uh, I'd be getting to know those guys. Uh, exact Sciences and and Promega. There, all of these are still building buildings, and now getting connections to the people. And I, I heard it in the breakout room. Getting the connections to the people who are actually making the decisions of the interior design, and they you want to get in their rolodex. And now it's not something overnight, but uh, they are going to fill their build their new buildings with art. And so they're gonna they're gonna buy. Gotcha. That Thank that's you. who I'd be that's who I'd be going after. Any others? Well, I think that seems like a great because we are a little over time and we yes. want to respect that. I think that Walter was a great statement to end on. Um, you know, take it's gonna take some time, but get out there and don't let don't let this little pandemic stop you. <laughs> exactly. It can't take this creative community down, that is for sure. Um, I do want to uh, give a shout out to Dane Arts. Without Dane Arts, we would not be here today. Dane Arts underwrites these workshops. Um, and we want to thank Mark and uh, the county for supporting the creative community and providing these opportunities um, to be able to do this outreach and education and help artists like yourself gain the skills you need to be confident business owners. So we're grateful for that. Um, I do want to remind you that our next workshop is coming up on the 29th. It is with Jen Rubin, and it's going to be a nice follow-up on this one because it's about learning how to tell your story and put what you are doing into a, a way that you can articulate your story in a way that's going to help you make sales, help you make those connections, and help you help others. So it will be very exciting. Um, Sarah's been popping in the chat there, the Dane Arts uh, website and everything, make sure you sign up for the Dane Arts newsletter. That's going to keep you up to date on all sorts of things that are happening um, from funding, opportunities, 
you know, uh, workshops like these and all sorts of things. If you want to be connected, you want to be on the Dane Arts newsletter to get that information. Um, I'm grateful to Walter for being here today and for sharing his insight. Um, he's right there. He's a great person to know. And you can start your practicing by outreaching to him right away and seeing if you can have a side conversation. Uh, Sarah and I are also available for one-on-one -on -one art consultation. If you, so if you have other questions, um, you can reach out to us as well. And we'd be happy to talk with you more um, and help do more connections. So with that, I thank you thank all you, for Jenny being Gow here tonight. Too. Oh, yes, Jenny. Oh, my goodness. Of course, your story was really um, inspirational and I think gave a really good foundation to what you can do even in a pandemic to keep yourself moving forward. So thank you for that and your advocacy um, for our community. I appreciate it. Um, and Sarah, thank you for working the chat and being here with us. With that, we appreciate everyone and uh, we will hopefully see you again soon. Get out there and connect. Have a great one.